Hopefully you guys did your homework. And we are going to, as Deacon Dale say, we are going to list the top 10 most goodest TV shows ever. Oh, oh somebody didn't do their own work. Okay, not comedies, traditional shows, whether it be drama or whatever, you know, on the Partridge family or the Brady Bunch side of the game. Or you can even do Johnny Quest because Deacon Dale and that is hot. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't know Dickie Dale was Haji from Johnny Quest? Yeah, Dickie Dale is. Hey, not to cut you off. So, this is for the audience. I got a disclaimer. If you're hearing ice cream trucks, any planes, any gunshots, any dogs barking, I'm in my garage. You know what I mean? So, you know, this. Just feel, just feel like you're at home. Just feel like you're at home. It's the, it's the man couch potatoes. It's couch potatoes in the man cave. Go ahead, drop that number, D. Great. I'm going to send a salute to everybody in the chat room, and then we're going to get this thing. Go. Drop the number in the chat while I get this salute to uh, chat rumors. The love seat potatoes. That's, the, that's our listeners. That's our supporters. They love sweet potatoes. I got my man Joe McGee, Joe from Houston, Joe the Kappa, Joe from Chicago, Joe from Dallas. This is Joe. And we got DJ Purplelicious in the building. We got my main man DJ Mooka Dean in the building. We got my man RC in the building. We got uh, Sacramento Blood in the building, aka his gift. We got the sister Shelly Q in the building. I thought I saw Big Big Inglewood in the building. I got my girl Shottown First Lady from uh, uh, what's the name of our show back in the day? First Lady, me and First Lady used to do a show together, y'all. Uh, uh, what's the name of that show? Oh, Windy City Clutch. We, that's the, that's how me and me and First Lady cut our teeth in the whole sports conversation biz. Windy City Clutch, and we got. Deacon Haji Dale, Johnny Quest, little cousin, and that's it. And you in this chat room, but everybody in the background, man, thank y'all, ladies and gentlemen, haters and bitter friends. The couch potatoes are in the building. Well, seeing how it's two episodes of the Many Rivers by Henry Louis Gates on public act. Uh, public uh, PBS what is it public broadcasting services this is a, a docu-series on our ancestors and it it delves deep and again much like the pre the, the previous docu-series that we watched enslaved catch up on it if you haven't watched it it's on ethics this is another powerful documentary by dr. Henry Louis Gates and uh, Dr. Gates tracks a family through one of their ancestors who was captured and put into slavery. Because we're not going to call these our, our ancestors slaves anymore. Because they are our ancestors. You wouldn't call your grandmother name like slave. So uh, people who are forced into slavery. And uh, this is a powerful series. And if you continue to watch, we only watched the first two episodes for this week. So uh, we are going to cover that. And then hopefully you guys, if you guys hear something that you like and you want to join the conversation, the number is simply 605-313-4379. That is 605-313-4379. There's going to be an access code you need, which is 920-547. Please, uh, we will get a notification when you call. Don't announce yourself. It does ask you to, but please don't announce yourself. We'll get a notification and we'll address you as you call in. D. Great, talk to me, man. Episode two: The African Americans, Many Rivers to Cross. Episode two: The Age of Slavery, seventeen eighty 
1886. More history, more information about our ancestors, man. And I'm a, I, I jotted down some stuff, man. And around that time, I'm looking at, they really talked about over 7,000. Uh, Actually, we can do both, bro. We can do both because this is our first review of the series. Oh, I thought we did part one last week. No, no, Shelly told us about it last week. It was Shelly's suggestion last week. Do the first two. That's right. You know what? I made them. Okay. Many rivers across the Black Atlantic. That's part one. Uh, shoot. We, we just gonna mix a combination of both of them together. I know I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth, man. Uh, you, hey, hey, crap. Thank you for uh, correcting me. Right. Uh, it was deep information, man. It was kind of a combination of what we wanted to enslave We kind of went. <coughs> Went in depth and then from just talking to you, it's just your history buff. You, you, you believe old boy left some information out that I think you have left us with tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, what I was, with, 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 what I was learning once again was, I guess, more confirmation from what the slaves have taught us and what we wasn't taught in school was that uh, bring the British. British, the British, man, Britain. It seemed like America, which is, they, they really took it to a whole nother level, but the British, bro, they really kind of ran that shit in the, in the early stages. Yeah. I mean, they kind of ran that shit in the early stages, man. I found out that uh, the, the, the name Anthony Johnson, I think you kind of also talked about him. That yeah, yeah. About Anthony. Yeah, I got you. Johnson. Yeah, just go ahead and break that down for us. Uh, uh, 1533, and they said that Florida was the first African that touched the land. Mm -hmm. That was Juan uh, Garrido. Garrido, I don't know if that's his name right. Uh, him and um, Cortez. Cortez, they took over uh, Mexico and they took California. It's a whole lot of stuff uh, that was happening in the early beginning, man. Like 1513, 1534, man. I think his name was uh, uh, Esteban Lamour. Esteban Lamour. I'll be writing his name down, but if you can laugh for a little bit more on these names and hate to break it down a little more than I am. Like, I'm, I'm more of a Swedish uh, case more than what, but, but the first is in the First, man, great, man. Can you speak on that? Great. Like, they seem like they, they, they was a jump off of everything, man. Everything well, for they, uh, well, when you're looking at the uh, the, uh, uh, the British colonies, this is the most powerful uh, nation at one point in the world. They used to make this statement the sun never sets on uh, Great Britain. And what that means is no matter where you are in the world, we running something now. If you were in China, Hong Kong used to be run by the Brits. If you were in India, they used to be run by the Brits. It, uh, uh, several countries throughout the Middle East run by the Brits. You come to Africa. Only only continent, only country on the continent of Africa, not by the Brits, that wasn't colonized, was Ethiopia. And still to this day, it's Ethiopia. So then you continue to move, you know, down as south, up under South America, the Falkland Islands. Just at the bottom east coast of the uh, um, of South America, you the Brits running this, Great Britain is running this, uh, the Caribbean, North America. So wherever you stood in the world, and the sun was shining, the sun is going to be shining on the British Empire. So of course they will be at the forefront of this. They had at one point they had the greatest army in the world. So yeah, they were at the forefront. As you mentioned, uh, Henry Louis Gates. I mean, I appreciate him, but at times I really don't. I'm gonna say it. I don't really like the job that he does. Uh, this has nothing to do with this series in particular, but remember the, the all the rage was who shot Malcolm X, right? And we were we were learning about that at the for the very first time, and we were like, oh my god, oh my goodness. As I do more research. Everybody in that town knew who killed Malcolm X. 
It was just one of those secrets. It, it was that uncle that touched your little sister that the family knew about and he was a freak, but the rest of the world did not know. You see what I'm saying? And Gates presented it to the world like it was some significant understanding, but the people who needed to know knew. And he's, and like with that thing, and, and when they was talking about Britain, I don't know if you touched on it, but they just, he just made it seem like the Brits woke up one day and was like, you know what? We need to stop doing black folks like this, man. We bogus. Man, I'm sorry, black people, and, and let us free. What happened in that instance, and I was, this is why I was disappointed in him, the brother Gates left out one important thing. It was a black man who went to the Brits. You know, he uh he went to the Brits and said, hey, yo, what's going on? And uh 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 y'all don't have any laws on the books to say I'm supposed to be a slave. So they asked the court and won. And that's when that's what set the abolishment of slavery in order. Gates presented it as if almost to me as if uh uh and you you I want you to speak on this. He made it seem like they had a crisis of conscience like slamming that sister on her head all those times made them go, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is wrong. We got to stop doing this." That ain't right. what happened. Right. That brother sued them. And see, and another thing about Dr. Gates that I don't like is he made sure it was Dr. to me. Again, you watch it, I watch it. I'm, I'm gonna be quiet after this. He made sure that the world knew that other people on the continent sold people on the continent and uh 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 to you know like brothers sold brothers too, almost as absolving. Europeans from the responsibility of stripping us of our humanity. Remember, I told you about the Ashantis in uh uh in Ghana. The Ashantis took over another tribe, probably in Ni Nigeria, Sierra Leone, or whatever. But that's how you got Kente cloth. They had a war. The Ashanti was a warrior class. They was like the Zulu, the Zulu in South South Africa. The Ashanti's in North Africa, busting folks in their mouth, right? Taking over villages, right? So the Ashanti took over this village, and they were they were not fighters, they were weavers. They were like like they were artsy. So they we this uh, a, a combination of tribes, the Ashanti, and I forgot the name of this tribe. That is why we have Kente cloth because those brothers and sisters was like. They got together, and without being able to speak each other's language, they got together and created Kente cloth. It's not really Kente cloth. I'm not I'm, the, the the name is escaping me right now, but the the natural pronunciation is not Kente. It's like Kunta. But you know, through decades and decades and centuries of translation, it becomes Kente. So you see, an African nation war with another African nation. Take over that nation. That nation creates a cloth that identifies brothers and sisters worldwide. So it was an act of war, and then something beautiful came out of it. So when you say the uh, brothers sold brothers too for money, nah, yeah, but that's just like saying, yeah. that's like saying, you know what? Uh, I got fifty. Uh, 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 uh the Kennedys are insanely rich. And Bob Johnson, who used to own Ebony and Jet, insanely rich. Well, Bob Johnson got his money working hard. And Kennedy was a bootleg. He was a drug dealer at the time. So, eh, that's what I don't like about Dr. Gates. I'm not going to dismiss. Huh? That's what they have to cut you off. That's what, they, that's what they came off with in the beginning. Uh, talking about the African selling other African nations to slaves. That's what they came off with. They use that for business, you know what I mean? And they show they show little pictures and drawings of them uh, being captured and doing what they have to do, you know what I mean? So yeah, so by you breaking it down from that point of sense, you get a better understanding and from what we learn from in play also. So a combination of both uh, theories, you know, will give you insight. And then also I advise people to go through their own research. Um, 
on the exactly. Show, you know, for the show. 